Well, that's the best introduction ever. Um, I didn't win in 2012 because it was on the jury. I just was throwing that out there. Um, so, vaccines today. It, this is a, a five-year uh, story. It's been going for five years. This is the main slide that I want to go through, and I'll, I'll jump back and forth a bit. Um, but uh, just to give you a bit of history about the project. So, uh, just after the, uh, the pandemic, there was a lot of reflection going on, and if you read any of the reports on that, um, communication was seen as a, a big problem. And a lot of the health authorities were maybe slow or absent uh, online at that time, um, and so were the industry and, and so were healthcare professionals. Um, and at the time, uh, the European Vaccine Manufacturers, which is now Vaccines Europe, um, commissioned a small study by a consultancy, I don't think it's published, but they did a sentiment analysis on Twitter and found that at the beginning of the pandemic, people had normal questions, how severe is the disease, what are the symptoms, will I get it, is there a vaccine, when can I get the vaccine? But as the pandemic ran its course, the, the mood changed and the sentiment turned quite negative and there was no one really there to respond quickly. Um, I think things have improved a lot in the meantime, there's a lot of healthcare professionals and others online and uh, health authorities are much, much better now. Um, but for their part, the vaccine manufacturers decided to set up this uh, website. And I was working as a health uh, journalist in, in Brussels at the time, and so I got involved in, uh, in writing some of the content. Um, the tone then, or basically we were talked about this for a few months, uh, about how to do it, should we do it, what if, we, what if things go terribly wrong? And in the end, someone, probably Angus, said, just do it, let's just go online and see what happens, and we learn as we go, and on we went. Um, there were no disasters, we've learned a lot along the way, and I'll tell you some of the, the things that we've, uh, we've come to realise. Um, and uh, yeah, we just went and we engaged and uh, it didn't blow up in our faces. So we're still there five years, five years later. Um, the tone generally is, it's quite a, I mean, it takes a journalistic approach to choosing stories. So we have some news sense, I think. Um, and we, we communicate honestly and, and uh, with the, the passion of, a, of an NGO. We try not to sound too formal. Um, and try to sound like the, the type of content that people want to read and that they read elsewhere. Um, and we have an editorial board that constantly reflects on what's working and what's not working. Um, so some of, the, some of the things that we knew at the very start are that, that as individuals we knew we probably didn't put into practice for a while and we learned along the way. So um, I mean we knew at the time what the deficit model was but we still felt we should fill an information shaped hole in those people's heads but after a couple of years, uh, we realized this wasn't what people wanted. And uh, as I'll explain in a moment, we, we've been using stories a lot more and a lot more visual, uh, visual communications, videos, infographics, and so on. Um, so, yeah, so we have regular meetings of our board, which is a mix of, uh, of industry people, health professionals, patient representative, some are here today, um, and people with experience in health authorities as well. Um, this, is, this is where we kind of took a turn about midway through the project where we realised that uh, even though the, um, the videos we were doing uh, in some cases were working quite well, uh, stories were a big, uh, a big help in attracting traffic. Um, th there's a story there on the bottom, well it's basically the bottom middle of the whole slide there, um, of a a boy called Max, and I'll tell you his story briefly if I can. Um, so Max's dad came across at a conference and then we let him write a, a blog post. Um, Max and his, Max's parents had gotten married, got a house, had two children quite quickly in, in Berlin, or in Germany at least. Um, and then Max got the measles, it was quite a bad case, but he was okay in a few weeks. Um, and they moved on. And then sometime when he was around eight or nine, his maths grades started to slip. They did all the usual things and they worried about him and spoke to the teachers and spoke to the kid and wondered if he had the wrong friends or too much TV or whatever. Um, and then he started having seizures, lapses, absences, uh, and a few seizures. Got on anticonvulsants, that helped a bit, although uh, his concentration was bad and he was tired. Um, but then when he was about 10, the seizures got worse and he had, uh, he had some tests and it turned out he had SSPE as a result of measles. Um, 
uh, as you probably know, this is an always fatal result of, of measles. It took them a while to accept that this was even true. Um, his parents, I think, were an engineer and a nurse, but they still thought about um, alternative treatments and they were in denial. They thought there must be some better explanation who could accept that this was really fatal. Um, but it was, and he wrote this blog post, uh, and it became, the by, by, by a long way, the most shared article we've ever had, I mean, into the hundreds of thousands, um, all over the place, all different countries, not even just English-speaking countries, uh, mainly on Facebook, where we, we had just opened a, a new channel, because we're currently, we're on Twitter and YouTube and Instagram for a competition that we run, uh, and we're on Facebook. Um, and on Facebook, these stories, especially if there's images, are, uh, are, are really powerful. Um, unfortunately, I had to update that story that Max's dad had written uh, after Max himself passed away at the age of 18. Um, so, I mean, we don't always want to tell horror stories, that this is a horror story. Um, and if there are more positive ways of telling vaccine stories, please uh, send them my way. But uh, in terms of what works, this has been very powerful. I wouldn't say it's all emotion all the time, though, because the other big hit uh, in, a, in a traffic sense is this video there on herd immunity, which you could watch without the, without the sound on. And it's kind of like a, an eight, 1980s open university thing, if you can imagine staying up too late in the middle of the night to watch open university um, on BBC Two. Uh, but this is, is a very simple explanation of herd immunity. There's a few of them out there. This is one that, that we have, and again, by a long way, it's the most popular uh, video that we have. Um, and you can use this, and you can embed it in your site. And now if you search what is herd immunity on Google, this is the top video you get. And if you just search herd immunity, I think it's third to CDC and Wikipedia, so that's pretty good. But we, it, these things seem to work, so we're trying to make much more... Um, what would you say, more, uh, more animated videos uh, that kind of explain simple concepts or answer something uh, very, very simple. Um, the clock is moving on, so I will move on. Um, credibility, at the very beginning, so we, we launched this um, out of nothing really, and uh, it, was, it is funded by the, by the industry. Um, so when I called uh, the ECDC or I called experts to do an interview, People hadn't heard of the site and they were a bit reluctant. So that five years ago was, was a bit of a challenge. But I think five years on, having done the things that I ran through in the first few points and just being straight with people and, and not, uh, I mean, we follow all the usual rules. There's no product promotion or anything like this on the site. Um, people trust us and people, uh, thankfully now, come to us with stories and ask us to be part of their uh, communication efforts if they're running a, a flu campaign or whatever it is. Um, so there are also two external validations or certificates that we have. One is the Health on the Net certificate, um, and the other is this WHO list of trustworthy websites called Vaccine Safety Net. Uh, that network will have its first, it's been there for a few years, but we'll have a conference at the end of November. Um, and the idea is to network people a bit better there. Um, just to, sorry, just to show you that herd immunity video is there. I won't play it because it's a bit too long. Um, th sorry, that is the vaccine safety net page for vaccines today. And this network will become more of a network in future and will uh, we'll promote each other's work. These are the the, uh, the credibility scores of Health on the Net. We have a supporters section. Uh, it's actually more than this. This was Thursday, but since then we've added a few um, immunization action coalition. LJ's here somewhere, but um, yeah, there's a few more there. Um, we're always looking for more supporters, so please uh, feel free to let me know if you want to uh, you want to join. We, we recently just finished a photo competition um, for the general public, so they had to send a photo and a story, and the winner is the top right. It's probably not the best photograph, but the story is that, uh, that this child had recovered from a serious case of pertussis when uh, she was six months. Her mother started a campaign and had some uh, of the immunization program changed in Italy. And I just saw last night on Twitter, because we just told her on Facebook that she won a thousand euro for the prize. She's donating it to uh, a vaccine advocacy campaign. So it's the first time anyone has done that with their prize. Most people pocket the prize, including the doctors that won last year. Um, 
And um, well, yeah, that's basically it. But just to say that, so I'm first of all very happy. Thanks, Angus, for inviting me. Um, and that I'm here, we're making videos at the back, please come. If you go to our uh, YouTube site, there's about 100 videos. I'd say about 70 of them were done here over a four year period. And um, one of the big pluses for me being here is trying to translate some of the theory that comes out here into practice. So, I mean, at the very beginning, we weren't really targeting the fence sitters the way we are now. We probably abused fear messaging a bit too much. And um, we were myth busting in the way that last year people said, that's backfiring. And now I see some of the things that have come in the first two presentations and I'm thinking, how do we apply that? So um, this is the way I'm thinking about all the things you'll be saying. And please, if you have ideas for me or, or ways that we can practically improve, let me know. Uh, if you want to become a supporter of vaccines today, you know, a, a moral supporter, it's not a financial thing, please tell me. And let's make a video. We're at the back of the hall. Thanks very much.